This video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. I remember the first time I saw Breaking Bad's final episode, Felina. There was so much anticipation and expectation that when it was over I had mixed emotions, simultaneously trying to enjoy an episode while grieving that I'll never have another episode to feel this way about. The writers did successfully tie up all loose ends, but it took some time to process it and recognize that the final episode did about as good a job as you can do in ending a show. But I thought it would be interesting to look over the key points of this episode and just examine, could it be better? By offering potential alternatives for how Walt's relationships could have ended with various characters. And you can explore and comment whether you think the Breaking Bad writers chose the best possible option, or if they missed an opportunity. Maybe this makes you rethink your perception of the episode, or it simply reinforces how solid the writing is, that the writers did in fact go with the best possible option each and every time. So here are the key points we're going to go over based on the setup of the preceding episodes, with Walt returning to town. And of course, there will be spoilers, so if you've somehow not seen the final episode of Breaking Bad but are still randomly clicking on video essays analysing it, this is your time to tune out. But first, a thank you to the sponsor of this video, Surfshark VPN. Surfshark are a company that encrypts your data and hides your virtual location. This means that it protects your online activity from your internet service provider, the government, and potential hackers. They keep no logs of your search or download history, keeping all of your activity private. With the click of a button, you can reset your virtual location to any of Surfshark's 65 available countries, which gives you access to what would be otherwise blocked content from certain regions on YouTube, as well as access to your favorite streaming services, different libraries. For example, if I want to watch The Office in the US, then it might not be available. But if I switch to the UK, then I can binge the entire series. So if you click the link below and enter the promo code OBSERVATION, you'll get 83% off, plus four extra months for free. And with the 30-day money-back guarantee, there's no reason not to at least try it. So start surfing the net in the safest and smartest way by clicking the link below and using the promo code OBSERVATION. So in Breaking Bad's Felina, essentially, Walt has two goals that must be achieved within this episode. Leave his family money and seek revenge. Other things still happen, but these are the two guiding motivations which will influence everything else. The first ending in Felina is Walt's relationship with Gretchen and Elliot. He devises a plan to have his former colleagues and philanthropic billionaires to give over $9 million to his son on his 18th birthday. As Walt can't get the money to his family as they hate him, but also any money that's given to them has to be legally accounted for, or it will be confiscated by the authorities. They agree to do it, but Walt guarantees they will follow through with it by pretending there are two hitmen that he has paid to watch their every move until they make the payment. As it turns out, these alleged hitmen were just Skinny P and Badger with laser pointers. They then inform Walt that his blue meth is still on the market and they assumed he was still cooking it, as it's just as good as ever. This makes Walt realize it must be Jesse cooking his famed recipe. This option ties up a lot of loose ends. It confirms Walt's family will legally get some of the money he earned for them, making Walt's endeavors for the last five seasons somewhat worthwhile, as he did claim he was doing it for his family all along. It also brings Skinny P and Badger in for a final scene, and they are the perfect characters to inform Walt about the blue meth, as they know Jesse and they also smoke. Let's look at some alternative options. Number one, when Walt first enters the house, he's an intruder and the scene has a violent feeling to it. When Gretchen sees him, she screams and Elliot runs to her side with a small knife. So the first obvious option and initial suspicion for the viewer is that Walt kills one or both of them, demonstrating that he was never over what happened with Grey Matter and that he's about to go on a bloody Tarantino-esque rampage to settle old scores. This would show that Walt has fully been taken over by Heisenberg, and it could be exciting. However, it would be a dramatic shift in tone for the series, where generally speaking characters are only killed pragmatically. It would also make Walt less empathetic, there would be no progress with getting his family any money after he's gone, and would make the show less rewatchable, as we know he ultimately just turns into someone with no redeeming qualities. 
Number two, Walt could have just held them both hostage and physically watched them wire the money to Walter Jr. or Skyler. The problem with that is that it would be too suspicious, especially if he ends up arrested or killed the following day. So the money is more likely to be confiscated and Gretchen and Elliot could easily turn on him. Number three, he also could have tied them up and just used their home as a base for the final episode as he only needs it for 24 hours. Number four, instead of Skinny P and Badger, he could have hired Kubi and Huel to intimidate them instead, like they did to Ted. This could be more entertaining, but the longer they spend with the characters, the more likely it is something goes wrong, such as the police getting called, someone getting killed, or a work obligation arising. Or Walt could have never gone to Gretchen and Elliot. Instead, he could have planted the money somewhere new and given his family the coordinates. But then there's no guarantee they accept it or that the police don't intercept it. In terms of finding out about his blue crystal still being on the market, when he calls into his home that's been vandalized, maybe some junkies now use it as a drug den in his name and he talks to them and examines the blue crystal and realizes Jesse must still be cooking it. Or number six, similar to the end of Bad Santa, Walt could have been in a police chase, racing home with a car full of cash that he wants to hand to his kids directly, and then gets shot as he's entering. This would be less calculated for Walt, but could demonstrate that he only cares about his family and the money. Of the available options, I think the writers chose the smartest one. In a pretty airtight situation, Gretchen and Elliot are the only clean legal way for Walt's family to get the money even if he doesn't get any of the credit. The next ending is Walt's relationship with Lydia. Having heard his blue crystal is still on the market, he's led to Lydia and discovers she's still meeting up with Todd. Walt uses this opportunity to deceive them, acting like he needs cash and has a new cooking technique to show Jack that can save them money long term. Knowing Lydia is a woman of routine, same time, same table, same drink, Walt spikes her same stevia packet with rice in, so she ends up poisoned. This was a pretty clean cut right move by the writers, but the alternative options could have been, Walt doesn't kill Lydia at all, which wouldn't be as satisfying. Walt places a bomb in her car or finds a more instant creative way of killing her using chemistry, or Walt kidnaps Lydia and has her bring him to Jack's compound at gunpoint. And we know Todd would do anything to protect her, which could lead to a big shootout. But all of this would arouse suspicion, as Walt would be entering as the enemy, as opposed to presumed to be harmless, which is what he needs to do. But more on that later. The next ending is Walt's relationship with Skylar. Skylar gets a call from Marie, telling her that Walt is back in town. He's been seen and is making various calls, threatening various locations, to spread the police pretty thin. She says the police are monitoring her house, so it's a million to one chance that Walt gets to her. That arrogant asshole thinks he's some criminal mastermind, but he's not. On the million to one chance, you'll be on the lookout, okay? Personally, I would have cut these lines about Walt falsely thinking he's a criminal mastermind and emphasizing the one in a million chance. It does build up to seeing Walt in the room already, but feels out of place, like something out of Sherlock or a superhero movie. We could just as easily have Skylar talking to the police outside, and when she goes inside, Walt is already there. But that would be harder to explain how Walt got around the cops if they were literally everywhere. This phone call from Marie technique allows our imaginations to do the work, but Walt wasn't exactly notorious for his subtle ability to sneak into buildings. In terms of the conversation, Walt achieves three things here. He gives Skylar coordinates to Hank and Gomez's burial site, which he tells her to trade for a deal with the prosecution. He finally admits he did all of this not for the family, but for himself. I liked it. I was good at it and he gets to see his daughter one last time. He then walks out without saying anything more. So what could have been done differently here? Firstly, Skylar could have just been scared of him and tried to run for the police and Walt has to stop her or silence her, creating far more conflict in the opening stages of the scene, but that tone would be hard to unwind once it's established. Skylar could have tried to kill or attack Walt for all that he has done to her and the family, but we already had glimpses of that in earlier episodes, and since then Walt did do her the favour of making it sound like she knew nothing about the business on the police recorded phone call, stating that she was always against it. Number three, Skylar could have argued a lot about Hank and told Walt about the horrors that the family and Marie have been going through the past few months. 
Number 4. They could have slept together one last time, showing that there is still strong feelings there, even if they're mixed with hatred. But realistically, Skylar has been through too much to find him appealing, and given her affair with Ted along the way, it might be a bit too weird. Or number 5. Walt could have gone rogue, kidnapped Skylar and the kids, and tried to drive them to Alaska with him, until the police show up and they have a big shootout, and he dies. Or he could drive them all out to the desert, and then off a cliff, like Thelma and Louise. But that would serve none of his goals, and easily be the worst possible ending. Or finally, on his way out, Walt could have simply closed with an I'm sorry, instead of nothing. And Skylar could have responded, no you're not which would further underline the point that Walt did all of this for himself. Ultimately, aside from the intro to the scene, I think the writers made the right choice. Time has passed since their last interactions, which helps emotions to settle. Skylar knows Walt won't hurt her. Having Walt finally admit he did this for himself is enough of a final moment between husband and wife. Could he have said something on his way out the door? Yes, and maybe you can come up with a better suggestion in the comments section. But after five seasons, I think they both understand one another enough to not need to say anything else. Less is more on this occasion. Next is Walt's final moment observing Walter Jr. enter the house. He's well aware the police are waiting outside nearby, so he just watches him. Were there any other plausible options here? Number one, Walt could have whispered to him and beckoned him over for a final hug, but they already had a phone call that went very poorly in an earlier episode. Why are you still alive? Why don't you just, just die already? Just, just die. Number two, Walt could have left him a letter by the front door. Or number three, Walt could have tried to reason with him, be seen by the cops, a potential shootout, and suddenly he's being chased away in a dramatic sequence. But after everything that just happened with Skylar before, any more drama would just undermine the preceding scene. So I think a quiet moment of a father watching his son walk home is enough, as Walt is left with the unsettling reality that he won't see him grow up anymore. We then come to the final chapter, where Walt concludes his relationship with Jack's men. He's orchestrated a machine gun to pop out of the trunk of his car, which wipes all of them out. The whole dynamic here could have been changed. Firstly, Walt could have just showed up armed to the teeth like Scarface and go on a rampage like the series had hinted he might in earlier episodes. But Walt is no marksman and is vastly outnumbered, so it would have been even less plausible if he shot his way in. Secondly, this whole scene could not take place at Jack's compound. Instead, Walt could have kidnapped Lydia and perhaps even Todd too and brought them out to the desert. It is a bit unusual that Breaking Bad, a show that spent most of its time out in the desert or in certain locations, ends in Jack's compound, a character that didn't even enter the show until season 5. However, we already had the desert shootout two episodes earlier, so it may have been too repetitive to set up the finale there again. But continuing on with the scene, Jack rejects Walt's offer to teach them a new money-saving cooking technique, and tells his men to take Walt out back and shoot him. Walt's car keys are out of reach, so it seems all is lost. But then Walt says Jack owes him, as he never killed Jesse and partnered up with him instead. Out of character, Jack takes huge offence to this. So much that he delays killing Walt and has Jesse revealed as a prisoner, not a partner. Just so he can gain Walt's respect before killing him? This decision gets Jesse in the room, which is what the script needs. But is it that realistic? Not really. There are some alternatives to how the scene unfolds. Number 1. Instead of rejecting Walt's offer, Jack could have sucked every last drop of information out of him and brought him to the lab to show them his new technique. Then Walt would have discovered Jesse is a slave there and told them to get him out of his sight, that he doesn't want Jesse seeing his new cooking techniques, and then unexpectedly blow up the lab, killing everyone else but Jesse. Alternatively, they could have taken Walt prisoner and held both him and Jesse in the lab as prisoners cooking meth, and the two have to put their differences aside to find a way to escape one last time. They could then have a final moment where Walt could escape with Jesse, but has a cheesy, no, you go, I'll slow them down moment. But that would take several episodes, or it would have to be a double episode, not just one finale. 
Alternatively, Jack could have wanted to hear Walt's idea, but brought Jesse up to have it explained to him instead, as Jesse would be the only one who would understand it in practical cooking terms. And then from there, Walt's original plan still goes ahead. Having Walt not being killed and Jesse being brought into the room, just being about respect and pride, feels a bit too unrealistic for Jack, especially when we have to have this awkward waiting for Jesse to arrive scene where Jack paces the room, apparently raging at the idea anyone would question his word, despite him being both a thief and a murderer. Walt's car keys being taken away from him is actually the only real conflict in the story so far. For a Breaking Bad episode, Walt's plan uncharacteristically just goes off without a hitch. He conscripts Gretchen and Elliot, no problem. Sees Skylar, no problem. Poisons Lydia, no problem. And then winds up here. It seems like something should have gone wrong at some point, and Walt should be pushed to the brink before executing his plan. So it could be that Walt had to figure something out first, and then just when he's about to be killed, he pushes the button and wipes them all out, or half of them out. It just seems a little strange that, for exclusively the last episode, everything just goes perfectly. However, the way Walt shoots Jack, cutting him off mid-sentence like he did to Hank, feels right. Then it comes to Walt's final moment with Jesse, after Walt gets shot while trying to save Jesse's life. Walt gives Jesse the gun and asks him to do it, but once Jesse sees Walt has already been wounded, tells him to do it himself. Say the words! Say you want this! The dialogue between them both is short. It doesn't go into detail about who did what when. It's clear and simple. After Jesse feels exhausted by Walt's consistent manipulation and refuses to be told what to do, even one more time. Outside, they exchange a final look, a nod to one another, and that's it. Jesse symbolically turns his back and leaves all of this behind him. What are some alternative endings? Number one, Jesse shoots Walt. But that would make it seem like their relationship was only contentious and sour, which it wasn't. They have saved each other's lives multiple times, and they have a father-son dynamic. Number two, Jesse immediately looks for and finds the money and offers to split it with Walt. But Walt tells Jesse he wants him to have it all. Number three, Walt falls to the floor, choking on his own blood like Jane did, and Jesse just watches him instead of doing anything. The ultimate karma for what happened to Jane. Number four, Walt apologizes for everything, that he never meant for him to get wrapped up in all of this. They hug, and Jesse leaves. This would be warmer, but after everything Walt has done, it could be a bit too warm and cheesy. The classic rule of show don't tell makes the original way a little more concise to not have long streams of dialogue explaining the character arcs. Number five, Jesse tries to bring Walt to the hospital as he just saved his life, but Walt refuses and just tells him to get out of here as soon as possible before the police arrive. Number six, Walt and Jesse drive away together and have their final scenes somewhere else, somewhere peaceful where Walt fades away from his bullet wound at sunset or sunrise, similar to Mike. Or number seven, a final handshake of respect between the two as Walt saving Jesse makes them all square. I think the writers largely got it right. With the risk of the police arriving any moment, the scene has to be cut short, so their final exchange is symbolic of the undercurrents within their dynamic which is both efficient and fulfilling storytelling. The audience don't lose respect for either character due to their decision here, only gain more. Walt made a sacrifice for Jesse, and Jesse didn't kill Walt, even if that's what he wanted. The final ending of the episode is Walt's death, where he walks through the lab and looks at the tools of his creation, proud of fulfilling his potential as the song Baby Blue plays. He then falls to the floor, leaving his handprint, almost like a signature, on the side of the apparatus. But what are the alternatives? Walt could turn on the gas with a timer and blow himself up with his creation. This would be visually interesting, but perhaps a bit much. However, rather than just looking at the lab, what if Walt, for the first time, actually smokes his precious baby blue, gets high on his own creation, and then dies finally understanding why his product was so popular? This would make the ending a little dirtier as he goes out on drugs, but it is the one thing that never happened throughout the show as he has lung cancer and needed to think clearly, but now there's no reason not to try it. 
Or finally, Walt could decide to cook a final batch, and when the police arrive, he doesn't stop, so they gun him down, meaning Walt goes out doing what he loved most, cooking. Personally, I think Walt smoking his baby blue just once before he slips to the floor and dies could have been interesting, but the ending as it is, is pretty damn perfect, and doesn't necessarily need anything more. So that was a look back on the finale of Breaking Bad. But what do you think? Were you satisfied by the ending? Would you have rather it ended in the desert rather than Jack's dark compound? Did you want Walt to go out in a blaze of glory? Do you think any of my potential alternatives would have been better, or do they only further underpin how perfect the last episode is as it ties up all loose ends? Or do you have some ideas of your own that you think would be better? So don't forget to check out the Surfshark link in the description, and if you enjoy videos like this, please do like the video and consider joining my Patreon community, as it really helps me to pump out more and more content when I know I have your support, and you can have more direct influence over what type of videos I make moving forward.